the emergence of what are termed transnational armed conflict illustrates well the difficulties of qualifying certain armed conflicts according to the traditional distinction between international armed conflicts and non-international armed conflicts. These conflicts typically involve state armed forces which are fighting organized armed groups located in the territory of a third state. A similar scenario arises when governmental forces involved in a non-international armed conflict against rebels pursue these rebels into the territory of a neighboring state where the group seeks refuge. These conflicts are also known as exported or delocalized conflicts or extraterritorial non-international armed conflicts. So-called transnational armed conflicts make up a large portion of contemporary armed conflicts. Take, for instance, the conflict between the armed forces of the United States and its coalition partners and Daesh in the territories of Iraq and Syria. Nearby, Turkish national armed forces are fighting the PKK in Syria. Colombian armed forces frequently attack FARC in their bases in Ecuador. There is also the international coalition of states currently fighting Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and in Yemen. At first sight, transnational or delocalized armed conflicts do not seem to easily fit into the traditional categories of armed conflicts. In contrast to non-international armed conflicts, they are not confined to the territory of one single state. However, in contrast to international armed conflicts, they do not oppose the armed forces of two or several states, but those of a state and of organized independent armed groups, which are not controlled by third states. This peculiar situation has generated many controversies in the legal literature that are worth briefly recalling here. Certain scholars, such as Schondorf, suggest that these conflicts constitute new type of hostilities that must be regulated by a new legal regime specially adapted to their specificities. According to them, this regime must combine the laws of international armed conflict for certain aspects and those of non-international armed conflicts for other aspects. Other scholars, such as Kande, adopt a more traditional approach and argue that the laws governing transnational or exported armed conflicts depends on wh whether the state in which organized armed groups are located has consented to the foreign state using force against them. Where such a consent exists, then the law of non-international armed conflict will gover govern the conflict. Indeed, such consent has the effect that there are not two opposing states involved in it. However, where no such consent is given, the use of force by the foreign state will be exercised against the territorial state, that is, against the territory, its people and infrastructure. This means that even if attacks are specifically directed towards armed groups situated in that state, the violation of the integrity of the territorial state transforms the conflict into an international armed conflict. Some author considers, however, that the consent of the territorial state is a political consideration that should have no bearing on the qualification of transnational or exported armed conflict. The crucial element is the nature of the actors involved in these conflicts. On one side, there are the armed forces of uh, the states fighting against each other, on the other, an independent armed group. Thus, according to these scholars, two conflicts are running in parallel. An international armed conflict between the two states and a non-international armed conflict between the foreign state and armed groups.